mind has been so programmed with hypnotic suggestions. The mind has been uh, overly programmed with uh, mass consciousness thoughts. You're, you're aware of the movie The Matrix. It's, it's been in the matrix. And the mind is trying to think its way out, but, but it can't. Its mind is trying to think its way into spirituality. And I hope by now you found out that it can't. You, the mind is going through a, uh, a transformation right now. The planet is going out of a mental era. And basically, there are a few on the planet right now who understand. You may not know the details, or there may not be scientific research, but you know, you understand what's happening. You're going beyond the limitations of the mind into the true I am. The mind is going to absolutely scream at you, and it's going to try to uh, use every trick it has to try to keep you from going beyond. It's going to pull out everything in its arsenal, trying to say, well, you still have to have the mind. I'm still the most important thing, or uh, you, you can't deny the mind. It's going to use all the tricks in the book. We're not trying to deny it. We're simply going beyond. We're not trying to annihilate it. We're simply saying that it has been the center of your identification, and it's not the real identification. The mind is not a bad thing at all, uh, but it was programmed and it was fortified to hold on to itself. It was, and you allowed the hypnotic programming into your life, and that programming is going to try to hang on. So, my dear friends, it will try to hang on. It will try to take your spirituality, uh, take your enlightenment for itself. It will, it will try to say it is the thing that is becoming enlightened, and it's not. It's not. Your mind is going to tell you right now that you should go on a program to try to go beyond the mind. You can't. The mind is going to try to you're going to try to tell yourself that you just need to focus on on going beyond the mind. Well, you're still in the mind when you do that. There's but one thing to do at this point, and that's allowing. Because going beyond the mind is a natural thing. It's going to happen anyway, sooner or later. Going beyond the mind and into the true self has already occurred. It's already occurred. It just hasn't been realized yet, because the mind is still tinkering, and you're allowing it to. It's scary. It's frightening. Because you don't know what you're walking into, because the mind has been programmed that there's nothing else out there. mind has been programmed if there is anything, it's going to be Satan, or darkness, or despair, or whatever. So it's going to come up with all of these things. There is always going to be a natural, or a, an element of um, facts and figures. That, that you have, uh, information, uh, the difference between uh, uh, meters and kilometers, the difference between uh, a tree and a dog, those type of things. You're always going to have that kind of um, uh, innate intelligence, but you're not going to be relying on that sense anymore for the decisions in your life, and you're not going to be relying on it for your spirituality. So we go now beyond the mind into the true realms, into the realms of knowingness, intuition, sensual feeling, those type of things beyond the mind. That's when you lay in your bed at night before you fall asleep, take a deep breath, and you just allow. Allowing has no force to it whatsoever. There's no pressure. There's no trying in allowing. Allowing is opening yourself up, the surrender to yourself. Not to God, not to angels, not to me, but the surrender to yourself and receiving. You cannot plan your way out of your mind. Many have tried, and it fails miserably. It only builds the mind. You cannot force your way or even pray your way out of the mind, but you can allow. And it can be graceful. It can be filled with ease and tremendous amount of humor. Because once you realize how truly limited you had allowed yourself to get, 
once you realized how you allowed yourself to continue down that mental path, to stay in that middle cloud, uh, to accept mediocrity, to accept just enough, you're going to laugh at yourself. You're going to wonder why I hadn't told you this sooner, and then I'll have the one with the last laugh. Let's talk about the, the components of your, your being here on Earth. We start with the body, and there's your mind. And there's the third component, the spirit. But there's something missing. There's a missing piece. Imagine for a moment, most of you are sitting in chairs. Imagine. If your chair only had three legs instead of four, what happens? Well, you learn to adapt and adjust. You learn how to sit in just such a way that you don't turn over. Your muscles in your body compensate, and the mechanisms of your mind go into their mode to make sure you're positioning yourself in just the right way. And after a while, you forget that there ever was a fourth leg. So in the original design of the biopsycho nature, there was another component, a beautiful component, called Deunast. The best way to explain Deunast is that it is, it is knowingness, but not knowingness from the mind. It is creativity, but not creativity from the mind. You see, right now, even for those of you who are artists and musicians, you use creativity, but it is saccharine. It is artificial. It is being created from the mind. There is literally a, a lobe in the mind where creative energies can flow and and be manifested, but it is not deunast. It is not the true, what you would call, creative ability. It is the ability to bridge between the non-physical realms and into the crystalline realms, and bring that energy and that consciousness down into the earthly realms. It is the ability to very rapidly manifest dreams using the balance of body, mind, nost, and spirit. Back in Atlantis, many individuals and many of you who are here allowed this work to be done on your mind, allowed artificial walls to go into place, closures of certain aspects of the mind, this imbalance of the four aspects of self that was designed on the angelic levels was now being distorted. Because of the conformity of the body, the control and the experiments of the mind, this fourth leg, Nost, just began to fade away. It went out of the reality. It wasn't used anymore because now everything was placed in the mind and also the focus on the body. When Nost began to fade away, as the mind took more and more control, it also reduced the ability to create, to manifest. It made creation very difficult. It made it a struggle. And pretty soon, people, they just followed what they were told to do or asked to do. When you bring that balance back into your life, it creates a glow, first of all. It creates an ease and a grace that you haven't known since the days of Atlantis. It creates a simplicity and a clarity that defies any words that I could say. It is cosmic and it is human all at the same time. So where does the solution come from? It doesn't come from your mind. Your mind is a terrible place for solutions. Your mind is great for analyzing, judging, 
um, determining values such as quantity, volume, things like that. But true solutions don't come from the mind. They come from nost. Nost, deu nost, is the solution. In nost is the answer. You can't force it in. And the mind is going to try to want to bring in nost and then control it, but it can't. Here's the difference between what you would call a mental um, way of figuring things out and a true nost solution. Mental, you'll feel the struggle. You'll feel your mind racing rapidly around. You'll feel yourself viewing many different potentials and scenarios. You'll feel fear and uncertainty. And you'll feel like you are, you are picking blindly or drawing blindly in the dark, just hoping to God that you're going to come up with something that doesn't hurt you. That's, that's mental. That's mental, trying to, trying to figure it out. So you let go of the problem. Tell yourself that you truly don't have a problem with your health. You're just going through an experience. You take a deep breath and you make way for Nost, the solution. You make way for it. You empty yourself in a way. You create your own safe and sacred place. You clean your house preparing for the guest, which is Nost, and then you let it go. Nost is a beautiful energy that is yours and yours alone. It doesn't come from us. It doesn't come from spirit. It is yours. Nost comes in gently and gracefully. It comes in easily. But when Nost comes in, the solution comes in. You'll have this incredible creative knowingness. You'll just know it. If you try to explain it to others, right then and there, it would be very difficult because it is a creative knowingness. It is an aha. It is warm and golden. It is the answer before the question. We can tell you from seeing your energy that Nast, that the cr creative knowingness, not intuition even, creative knowingness, is ready to come back. It is time in your life, you have gone through all of the other things, it is time for that missing component, that peace to come back. This planet has been going through its mental era ever since the, uh, let's say, the last uh, period of Atlantis. There's been a focus on the mind, a uh, focus on thought and intelligence, and in a way it was very appropriate. But now there's a natural evolution beyond that. The whole planet is starting to move beyond the mental era. It's also part of the freedom equation. You've got to be free of the mind in order to really uh, have your true freedom. What's beyond the mind? Some call it intuition. Others say it's nost. Some call it divine intelligence. I say it's knowingness. Knowingness. A knowing that it's already there. A knowing that you already know. Knowingness. Complete. Full. What does the knowingness know? Well, in a way, everything. Everything important. The knowingness already realizes that the energies are in perfect alignment. The knowingness knows that everything comes to it, to you, in the perfect moment. In the perfect moment, without pushing or without stress. The knowingness knows that 
There are no lessons to be learned. There are no faults to be corrected. There's no karma to be overcome. The knowingness knows that it is already fulfilled. Therefore, it can absolutely enjoy the experience of life, of being, of existing. The knowingness doesn't have to contain scientific facts, mathematical formulas, historical dates and information. The knowingness doesn't have to know how the universe works. It doesn't have to know any of these things because it already knows that everything is in perfect order. And when it needs to know something, when it needs to have a fact, when it needs to have a certain talent, when it needs to have a insight, it will be there at the perfect moment. The knowingness isn't going to try to put itself above the thoughts or the mind. Rather, it will allow itself to be part of integrating in with the thoughts, with the rational, logical process. Ultimately, mind and knowingness meld together. The mind having a great understanding of human life, of this dimension of physicality and time. And the knowingness, well, it knows. It knows that everything works out. It knows that everything is there when it's needed. It knows that it already knows. Now imagine for a moment, the mind, the mental, melding together, integrating with the sparkles of knowingness. So now you have a beautiful mind grand intelligence of the knowingness, working harmoniously together, hand in hand. So when you encounter problems, challenges, issues, stop for a moment, take a deep breath, come back to this space, come into knowingness. I ask you to feel that knowingness once again, that thing that has guided you brought you here, that you've always known was there. Feel into it right now. Take a deep breath into knowingness. And the brain, the mind, the intellect says, I give you my oath that even though I'm going to continue to try to control things, and I know I will, I can't help myself, even though I'm going to continue to try to be logical about everything. I'm going to do things like scorn at fantasy and magic, because that's my job. I'm going to make my oath that even though I'm going to stay very closely tied in with time and space, and try to keep you tied into it as well. The moment you say, stop, no more, I will. So any time that we're in a situation where you know I'm just trying to protect or hold back, just tell me, stop, no more, and I will. I will. I'll step back into the shadows. I'll realize that you're ready to go beyond the mind and the brain and the human intellect. And even though I might shudder thinking, oh, what's going to come of this? I'll realize that you're in your truth now in your own energy. You don't need me protecting. 
I'm still going to try to do it, but I'm programmed that way. But I'm also programmed for obedience to the Master. I'll be in obedience to you, dear Master. 